So I've had this nagging feeling to come out here and do a video on um, somatics and shadow work, like just a very basic entry level uh, video into this. And so I kept pushing it off, kept pushing it off. I was like, no, 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 I need to do these things first. And then I finally like get the urge and the nudge just won't go away. So I'm like, okay, but it's so beautiful outside. I wanna be outside. So I get all my stuff, I come outside, I find a nice spot, it's very quiet outside, the birds are going, the wind is going, you know, the trees are swaying, and I'm like getting in the zone, and then all of the garbage trucks for the neighborhood start to uh, do their thing. So I'm going to just sit here and meditate, and when they pass, I will get started on this video but I just thought it was really funny. Oh my goodness, you guys, all three of them come at the same time, apparently. Oh. <laughs> this is what I get for like pushing off the urge and the nudge when I first had it, you know, like several hours ago. All right, I'm just going to go water my garden first and then I'll create this video. <laughs> This is gonna happen. Okay, they are mostly on, and that's just how it's gonna be. So, <sighs> if you haven't already kicked your shoes off, if you're not in some nice, comfy clothes, like if you're not driving, that's great. I just would like to invite you into this video, into this space with me by taking like three to five cleansing breaths. So this is in through the nose and really just like let it go out the mouth. The wind is breathing with us. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, so I wanted to talk about shadow work. I don't know why I wanted to talk about it. I just know that it was on my heart and mind today and I'm gonna do it. So what is shadow work? Well, I feel like there's a lot of technical ways that we can get into shadow work. And there's so much extensive um, psychology, especially when you start diving into Carl Jung and Jungian psychology. So there's like a whole plethora of research that you can go and do if you're looking for like an academic definition of what shadow work is. Here in this video, I'm going to kind of share with you how I perceive shadow work. Um, talk about a couple of the terms that go along with shadow work that have been defined by Carl Jung, at least from my lineage of learning about this. And then to dive into some practical, fun, somatic tips to beginning a journey of shadow work, if that makes sense. So shadow work is basically working with the unconscious. So the things that we're not aware of, which I get it. If we're not aware of it, how can we work on it? That's a conversation for another time. So it's the shadow is defined as loosely the unconscious mind, um, the subconscious, or the dark, repressed, hidden away aspects of our psyche. So when we think about spirituality, when we think about 
uh, growth and evolution and change and transformation, we're really thinking about coming into wholeness, coming into unity, into oneness, into, there's this term that gets used a lot, integration. So being in integration means that we're no longer fragmented and we're not acting from pieces or parts of ourselves, but we are acting so much as we are aware from our full, whole, healed, knowing selves, rather than um, a triggered response, a freeze state, a fawn state, an unconscious state. Um, there's so many different like layers that we could go into there, but that's that's loosely what we mean by shadow when we're talking about shadow work. So shadow work is to bring light to the parts of ourselves that we either repress or shun or push away or project onto other people, right? So these are the aspects that we don't take full responsibility for in our personality, in our psyche, but really all of it is oneness. I am one, you are one, we are fragments of the one. Ultimately, there's no difference, but since we are in a human experience, you know, we, we came here to experience different realities and different expressions. And so there's differences in this experience here on earth. And that's totally normal. So we're not trying to get out of that so much as we're just trying to bring awareness to that so that there can be more love and empathy and connection in the world. Is that all I wanna say on that? Yes, so the shadow is really the parts of ourselves that we've repressed, projected, denied, shunned, or put away. And it is learning how to bring these aspects into the light of our awareness up to the surface of our consciousness where we can lovingly, compassionately, and with a lot of curiosity, gaze upon it so that we can dissolve it back into wholeness, back into love, back into light. Um, so that is essentially shadow work. And I think with this type of work, um, it tends to get a lot of, uh, no, I don't want to go that way. Um, yeah, let me just ground down here for a second. So with shadow work, it can tend to be heavy, heady and heavy, meaning if we get tripped up into our anger or our depression or our jealousy or our rage, these parts of ourselves that we don't really love to, you know, claim as ours and be like, I'm a rageful person. Nice to meet you. You know, like those are the things that like when if they get activated in our system without the proper foundation, we instead of dissolving them can actually amplify them and that is the last thing that we want to do with shadow work in the world is go out and amplify the unhealed repressed you know looking for love parts of ourselves into the world because we're going to do harm that way even if we aren't meaning to do harm that way um so it tends to be very heady and logical and um just very heavy and so I like to bring a more somatic approach to it partly because I'm a somatic practitioner so it comes like very easily to me uh, there are loads of ways to do shadow work so kind of play around and, and search around and see what resonates with you but for me coming into my body wasn't always the easiest and most one second. Hey babe, I'm on a video. Sorry. I'm gonna finish my video. I love you very much, but you give me all giddy inside and I can't focus. I'm gonna go to the butcher shop. Okay. I love you. <laughs> love you very much. Love you, love you most. Remember who you are.
sorry about that you guys um somatic work where was i i got all giddy i saw the love of my life <laughs> that is shadow work did you see that so i was like feeling all antsy and giddy inside and so i'm expressing it with my body um just to get it out so that i'm not in that state of being anymore and i can come back to this moment which was coming back into my body wasn't always fun. I didn't always love being in my physical body. It meant that I had to acknowledge some pain, some heartache, some grief, maybe even some fear, some terror. You know, there are things that I was feeling, but because I was allowing myself to live up here in like conceptual reality and kind of just being more focused on like the future and the past and where I'm going and where I've been and you know like making sense of everything and the story oh my goodness the story you know that's that's a safe place to be but once I started coming down into my heart which is just a little deeper in the body if we're thinking top down even then it was a little nerve-wracking because here at our heart center is where we feel truth it's where we feel resonance. It's where we feel connection, not just to each other, but also um, to ourselves, you know, into the earth. And it's where we come into our senses. It's where we take deeper breaths. Instead of breathing from here and here, now we're breathing from our chest, from our heart, from our lungs, from our ribs. And so, we come down into physical reality just a little bit more and here there can be grief and pain and anger and resentment and judgments maybe towards other people or towards ourselves and that can be a lot to sit with and what tends to happen is we get down there and then we feel the feeling and we go ah! Ah, freeze or we go ah, run away or hide or we just become the feeling you know, and some, some things are good to become, you know, like joy and bliss and, you know, but if we were always joyous and blissful, it might be a little like psychopathic. I don't know. I'll leave that one to you guys. Um, so I like to bring shadow work down into the body. And this is the foundation for me personally. I think it's hard to do shadow work outside of the body because you're not really addressing the tissues and the foundation of the matter, which is what your body is holding on to, regardless of the story. You can like rewrite a story all you want and you can chant your affirmations and you can sing your songs and you can dance and do all of that. But if you're not letting the body express the very real reality it's lived without any judgment and any story and without the need to change it, it's never going to shift. And this is shadow work to me. So it's coming into the body, locating where we may be feeling a sensation in the present moment, what that sensation is, if there's a feeling attached to it, um, and what it needs, whether it's just presence, breath, maybe it needs to shake, or to move, or to cry, or to scream and grunt and you know, get loud and use your voice to move the breath and the body and the energy. So that to me is what it means to bring somatics into shadow work. Um, let's see, where do we wanna go next? I think it'd be really fun just to bring a little bit of experiential knowledge into this because I've just been like talking at you in this video but I would really love to bring you back into your breath um, back into your body and this is a safe way to begin shadow work because if you can't stay in your body without flying away or dissociating or freezing or you know getting into a freeze state or a freeze response uh, you're not ever really going to shift the thing. You're just going to keep traumatizing yourself or re-triggering yourself. And that's not the point. The point of shadow work isn't to like bulldoze your way into healing. 
it's a loving, gentle coming home so that you can come back into wholeness. And all that, all that requires is for you to slow down the breath, drop into the body, and notice what you notice. So we're just gonna do that for like two minutes here. It's not gonna be a huge practice. So if you want to close your eyes, if you're in a safe space to close your eyes, or if you just wanna take a soft gaze, maybe you can look at the little mailbox for the bird here. Mailbox, like they get mail. You know, the bird feeder where they eat food, Kayla. They don't check their mail. Bird box, you could even stare at this bird box if you wanted. I'm going to close my eyes. So just at the start of the video, like we did some cleansing breaths in through the nose. Exhale, sigh it out the mouth. Really bring the navel to the spine. Sit in the emptiness of your breath. Widen your nostrils. Breathe in through the nose slowly. Exhale, empty the lungs, the belly. One more time, slowly sipping in air through the nose, letting the belly widen and expand. And keeping the breath nice and natural here. We don't wanna be forceful with it. Bringing yourself into this present moment. What are the things that you hear? And don't name the thing so much as just feel the sensation of hearing the birds, of hearing my voice vibrate your eardrum. You know, what is that feeling like in the body? How does hearing become a sensation in the body? If the eyes are open gently without losing focus, noticing what you see, colors, shapes. If the eyes are closed, maybe there's different shades and colors in your mind's eye. And notice if there's any smells in the room. Notice if there's a taste on the tongue or in the mouth or on the breath. And then gently begin to feel your body. So just notice what sensations are moving in the body. Maybe it's the heartbeat the rise and fall of your chest and belly as you breathe, the sensation of air coming in through the nose and tickling all the hairs down the throat. Maybe there's a buzzing sensation or a tingling, maybe some heat. gently open the eyes if they aren't already maintaining this presence with your body as you come into connection with me so being aware now of all the sounds the sights your body as you and I tune into each other even though we're not in the same space feeling your breath hearing my words Placing a hand wherever you feel the most sensation. This could be tightness, it could be pleasurable, it could be tingles, it could be softness. Whatever it is that you're feeling, don't think about it too hard. Just notice it and acknowledge it and accept it. Right now I'm feeling a lot of sensation in my solar plexus. So I'm placing my hand here on my solar plexus. 
which is my navel for those of you who don't do yoga because I know not everyone does yoga. So once you find this place in your body, oh, mine's already shifted. So now I'm moving my hands down to my low belly. Take a moment to breathe and connect to that place with your hand. As if you could breathe through your hand into the place that you're touching. Really connect with this place. Maybe the eyes close again or they remain open. Notice if your mind starts to create a story, we're just focusing on the sensation. What do you feel? Maybe you wanna pause this video and just name out loud with yourself, I feel tension, tingling, warmth, etc. From here, we're going to make a sound. So close the eyes if you can, or take a soft gaze, keeping the hand where you feel the sensation. And without thinking of the answer, just letting whatever arises without judgment, to answer this question. If this part of me could make a sound or a shape, what sound or shape would it be making? Maybe it's very clear to you. Maybe you're like, I don't know, but it's in there. What we're gonna do is take a breath and then on the exhale, you're just gonna let it go and you're just gonna make a sound and you're just gonna let it rise up out of you. <sighs> and maybe you'll do two or three more rounds. And then you'll sit in silence and just notice if the sensation moved in your body. Maybe it's still in the same place and you have a lot that's there. Maybe you've unlocked some tears or some rage and you need to go sound out a little bit more. <clears throat> but I invite you to gently Remove your hand if you haven't already. Come back into this space. So that technically isn't shadow work, but that is the baseline for getting into the body so that you can begin an exploration of the deep unconscious from a loving, safe, and grounded way rather than uh, potentially re-triggering you into an old wound which happens sometimes we go into these places and we begin to see stuff that we had forgotten about or feelings that we had not felt in a very long time because we've just been ignoring our bodies so this is just a gentle practice to incorporate throughout your day or maybe during a morning routine or an evening routine just to start establishing safety in your nervous system because that is the key to shadow work. So once you have established some level baseline of safety in the nervous system, that's when the exploration of shadow work can really start to begin. And that's gonna look like doing inner child work journeys, um, deeper somatic meditations, somatic movements and dance and expression. These are all things that I would love to make videos on in the future. Um, but right now I really just wanted to pop in, explain my version of shadow work and how I conceptualize the shadow and how I bring myself to the work because 
anything that you do with awareness will shift and change. And your state of consciousness is what matters most. Um, you're, you could see whatever you see in there, whatever you see in your unconscious or your feelings or your fears and anxieties. What matters is the presence, the witness behind whatever is playing out in the journey. And so it's learning how to be in witness consciousness and to be compassionate and caring and so curious at the things that you see or feel. You may not see anything. Um, and to trust the process and the unfolding. It's not a linear process. It's more, it's more like a thread that you're pulling on. And sometimes it's really easy. And eventually you'll hit a knot and maybe the knot is like really tiny and it only needs a little tug. Um, or maybe it's like full of a lot of stuff and you've run into like where all the things are coming together. And so when you pull on something, you're triggering and moving a bunch of other things. And that can take a lot of time and presence and patience to work through because we never wanna just yank on the thread and harm ourselves and experience an explosion of like energy because that's just going to like be volatile and um, you have to be able to know what your nervous system is capable of sitting with and integrating in the days to come so thank you for spending this time with me i really appreciate it um it was super fun and you know i wish you just the most magical day ever. Um, I wish shadow work was all like easy and fun, but sometimes it's challenging. So just be patient with yourself, practice the body stuff. And if you're looking for a shadow work practitioner or just to establish some safety in your nervous system before you begin actual shadow work, I do offer a one-on-one -on -one sessions and you can find that in the link below. Okay. Happy traveling, my loves. I hope you have a beautiful day.